Hello, uh, welcome to Real Learning Center. Uh, today we are going to start uh, a five video series on magnetism. So what are magnets? Magnet from uh, current, uh, the relationship between electricity and magnetism. Uh, and then how do we make electric motors? How do we create electric dynamos? And what are the transformers? Some of these things we are going to basically bring about. Uh, in this uh, five uh, video series magnetism and uh, we will also relate uh, many of the uh, concepts between electricity and magnetism uh, in this series. So keep watching. So let's move, move to the first video called what are magnets. It covers the fundamentals of magnetism. So uh, just watch here. This is a small toy car. Okay. The toy car is sitting on a track and the track is made up of magnets and it is arranged in such a way that the car actually gets up from the ground and it actually moves without touching the ground. This is called levitation. We can now watch here the magnetic levitation and how fast the car is moving. This is levitating car. And magnetic levitation toys today are easily available uh, uh, in the market. You can see here, this is actually a, a simple uh, demonstration of how you can actually levitate a small magnetic top. And you can make it fascinating you know, by putting a bubble around this and putting smoke around this. And all. It's very interesting. Okay? So, and you can today see actually... Uh, a lot of toys and a car. You can see a car levitating, and even the even a plant can levitate. Okay, so that is possible by using magnetism. So, what are the properties of magnets that can make such fascinating toys? So, let's take a look at them. Okay, now there are uh, basically three properties of magnets that we need to know in order to define most of the aspects of magnets. The first one, as you can see, is very simply the magnets actually attract iron. Okay. So that is one thing that every child plays with. You know, give him a magnet and a little bit of iron, you can keep playing with it. So it's very fascinating to see how it attracts. And secondly, you can see also uh, that if you take two magnets, you know, these magnets are actually having two poles, so north pole and south pole, you can see. And if you bring them together, uh, near near to each other, so what happens is interesting. Okay, you can see here. In the top they attracted, in the bottom they repelled, because you can see very well that the S and N actually attract. That means south pole and north pole they attract. Okay, and south and south they repel. Similarly, north and north they repel. So, to summarize all these three, we can say actually that like poles repel and unlike poles like north and south attract. So, this is the important second property uh, of a magnet. Okay. And then uh, third property that we can see is that it is in a way related to the second property, but you can uh, separately also say that you can be uh, the magnetic compass needle that we talked about. This is like a magnetic compass needle. Okay. This needle, we can see, is always showing north direction. So, it aligns itself to north-south direction and not east-west. Okay. That is the property of a magnetic compass needle. So, this, why that aligns to north-south and not east-west? So, we will see that when we go a little forward and understand the magnetism a little better. Now, so they show north is the third property. So, magnets attract iron, like poles repel, unlike poles attract, and they show north, magnetic compass needles. So, these are the three properties with which we start our magnetism. So, now the first question that came, uh, that generally comes to anybody's mind is, what are these magnets? Are they different kind of elements? So like, for example, we talk about copper, aluminum, uh, all these things. So, the magnets are not different kinds of elements. 
the magnitude is a, a special property of already known elements. Now you can see that, for example, the magnets that you are seeing here have various shapes. Okay, the one which you see south north written here is called a bar magnet. It is actually uh, painted with those colors, but it is not the original color. It is actually uh, a ferrite magnet. Okay, it is made up of iron. Okay. And this U magnet and the horseshoe magnet, all these are actually made up of iron. Okay, they are called ferrite magnets. And the one which is still looking, it's, it's called a rare earth magnet. It is made up of iron plus some rare earth elements like neodymium. It's made up of neodymium. These are very powerful magnets. This neodymium is actually quite powerful. And if you take uh, this, this shows here several small discs attached to each other. Uh, so if you try to separate them in your hand, it is not very easy. Okay, you need to slip it away to be able to separate it. So magnets are, uh, these magnets are, can be very, very, very powerful. Okay. They have a lot of applications in the industry too. Now you can see, uh, if you ask a question, the magnets are not separate elements. Uh, they are like iron and uh, you know, some other uh, nickel, and many other uh, elements you know, actually have, the metals actually can have magnetism. So when do, they, when do these uh, metals, you know, when do they have magnetism and when do they not have magnetism? So that we will see. So now if you see here, why not why not all iron pieces magnets? Why are they not magnets? That is because if you take a closer look at an iron piece, okay, I am taking one iron piece here, uh, iron bar, okay, and I am writing an exaggerated picture here. So what you see inside are very small micro level magnets millions and billions of them are there in every way, every iron piece. Okay. So these small, small, small magnets are called magnetic domains. See, each domain actually is made up of a bunch of atoms okay, aligned together. Each atom has a certain amount of magnetism and they are aligned together to form a, a domain which has, which behaves like a small magnet. North, 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 south. You can see north, south, north, south. So many of them. But each one of those the, uh, those domains are aligned in different directions. So they are not aligned in the same direction. So their magnetism they cancel out, and ultimately an iron piece does not behave like a magnet. Okay. So, however, if you take the same iron piece okay, and keep it in the presence of a very strong magnetic field, suppose, suddenly these small domains, they get aligned. Once they get aligned in one direction, they become powerful. And they are all, each one's magnetic uh, power uh, gets added up and it becomes a magnet. So an iron piece kept in the presence of a strong magnetic field will become a magnet. That is how you make a magnet. So you can see, now once it becomes a magnet, it will start processing, so called the magnetic field. Magnetic field is an invisible force field. I mean, you can't see and touch a magnetic field. But in a magnetic field, if you put another magnet or an iron, uh, iron gets attracted and if it is another magnet, compass needle, it deflects. Okay. So this magnetic field is basically having certain strength called magnetic field strength that comes because of the power of the magnet. If the magnetic uh, uh, piece, actually, if you look at the iron piece, uh, if it is magnetized more, means there is a very nice alignment, then it is very highly powerful. Okay. And it also has direction. Magnetic field lines are supposed to actually emanate from the north pole and go towards the south pole. Okay, They emanate from the north pole and go towards the south pole. So they always travel, the field lines actually always go from north to south outside a magnet. Whereas inside the magnet, they go from south to north. So these magnetic field lines are supposed to be always a closed loops. These are closed loops. Okay. They start from north, go to the south of the magnet and enter back inside and reach that. They are all circles and ellipses. So these are called magnetic field lines. So now in the presence of the magnet, they become uh, uh, 
an iron piece became a magnet. Now let us say if I take a magnet and uh, use a compass needle, where does it point to if I keep near the magnet? Okay, now what I am showing here is one magnet. Whenever I show a magnet, I show south and north. Okay, one pole is called south pole, the other called north pole. Sorry, north pole and south pole. So, the lines that I have put around, they are not visible. They have just imaginary lines. You know, they ha I have put the lines. Okay. So, how I uh, have put those lines? So, I have done by basically taking a compass needle and putting the compass needle around the magnet everywhere. I place them, place a compass needle and then start looking at where does it point. Wherever the compass needle points to, that is the direction at that point the magnetic field lines. For example, if I keep a compass needle here, okay, you can see that the north and the south attract and hence south is showing this way, north is showing this way. So, north always shows the direction of the field lines. Now, if you keep it on the other side, you can see very clearly because this side is south of the bar magnet, it gets, it, it attracts the uh, unlike pole which is basically north and north points to this side and you can see that the arrow of those lines also are pointing in the direction of the north. So think about suppose suppose if I keep my uh, magnetic uh, compass needle here okay, where does it point to? So remember that if I put the needle there uh, compass needle there it always turns and points towards the direction of the magnetic so, there is in the magnetic field is shown here by an arrow. So, it always points in that direction. So, your north points the direction of the magnetic field. And if I keep it here naturally, it shows in this direction. The north points towards the direction of the magnetic field. Now, can you tell me if I actually put it here, where does it go? Again, the same thing. It points towards the direction of the magnetic field. If I keep it here in the middle, so, carefully look at this, which, what is the direction of the magnetic field? It emanates from north, goes like this and goes to south. So in this point, basically it is horizontally traveling from left to right. So, it points exactly like that, south and north, left to right. And same is the, see it, it is showing exactly the direction of the magnetic field. Same is the case, for example, with... Uh, if you keep it here. So, here again, it emanates from north and goes towards the south. So, here from left to right. So, the direction of the magnetic field is what it shows, south to north. So, that is the interaction of compass needle. You can keep the compass needle at multiple points and find out what is the direction of the magnetic field at that point. So, now, north pole always aligns with the direction of the arrow, that much we have understood. So, earth also has magnetic field. That is why when you keep a compass needle on my table, it shows the direction of the, uh, where the north is. Okay. Earth magnetic field is such that the north pole, what we call north pole uh, of the earth has uh, south pole of the internal magnet okay? and south pole of the earth has a north pole of the internal magnet. So, that is how it is aligned. That is why the magnet needle shows north uh, to the geographic north. It is actually showing the magnetic south. Okay? So, since that is aligned to the geographic north, we see it as the north. Okay? So, that is our north and this is our south. So, if you keep the magnetic uh, uh, compass needle here, it shows the north. Now, uh, this is one small simulation that you can see uh, how uh, you can uh, move the compass needle everywhere and see that it is aligned with the magnetic field. Okay? So, this gives the simulation uh, of uh, magnetic field uh, given uh, and if you keep a bar magnet in the middle uh, and see how uh, the magnetic field is set around the magnet and uh, you can see that uh, you can test 
the direction of the field by looking at um, the uh, where the compass needle is pointing okay now let's just move the compass needle to this side you can clearly see the compass needle shows uh, the direction of the north so if you see from south to north uh, you, you look at this now these arrow the red pointing to north okay each one of these points have red north okay so uh, the lines magnetic lines actually go around like this Okay, from here they get out of the north and enter back into the south so at any point you see this arrow points basically uh, towards uh, the south okay. uh, or we can say this arrow points in the direction of the magnetic field so always arrow if you keep it here for example the arrow points uh, in this direction so which is the direction of the magnetic field and maybe you can move it here in the middle and in the middle you can see that the arrow points again in the direction so just keep it exactly parallel and you can see that the arrow is perfectly uh, the magnetic uh, uh, field lines are perfectly parallel here so that is how you can actually see uh, in fact you, know, you can even see uh, that uh, if you change the uh, polarity south north i flip let us say so when i flip this you can see that this also rotates okay, it also flips okay. so once you have uh, the earth seen here now you can see that the uh, top is showing uh, uh, south in this magnetic field and here and this is showing north but we know that this side is actually north and this side is south and the north where we call the geographic north uh, is supposed to basically represent the magnetic south and vice versa so magnetic uh, north and geographic south are related hence when you actually simply keep a needle here it shows the north that means it shows the geographic north okay uh, and then if you move this uh, let us say uh, this compass needle to uh, another place you can see it shows all that time it shows the north it dips here and if you keep it into the uh, directly on the uh, pole so you can see that needle shows again the north and here you can see it shows basically the north this side and if you come to the poles this pole south pole you can see that this shows the south pole okay. so earth is also a magnet okay so now the next question that comes is can we make a magnet so if you keep an iron okay, let's say in this case i am keeping one small iron nail uh, in the presence of a magnetic field very near to the magnetic field so if you keep it like this for days together okay, like months and then you take out the iron piece uh, the nail it would have become a magnet so that is how you make uh, a magnet but uh, what if i want to make a magnet here in the lab very quickly i don't want to keep it for for a very long time okay so there is another method so what you do is you take a nail okay and to the nail you actually rub using a magnet if you have a magnet like this and this is let us say this north pole i keep rubbing it like this but don't rub it like this if you rub it like this it will not become a magnet you will have to make sure that the inside domains are all aligned for that you rub it in one direction put your hand up and come back and rub it in another direction same direction never change the direction this is how you rub so that internal domains are all aligned in one direction and such a way of doing is called as a single touch method so one touch go come back one touch like that don't keep doing this okay so when you do that you can easily make uh, a small nail into a magnet you can try it at home you take a nail you take uh, a magnet uh, which is available uh, in toy shops also and you can make a magnet on your own 
more and more rubbing becomes it becomes more and more powerful magnet so that is the way to make a magnet at home so if you actually see earth is a magnet we showed you that earth itself is a magnet okay and earth are, if you keep something in the earth magnetic field will it not become a magnet is a question so you look at that in your home whatever you put okay, some iron piece all of them actually have a have become slightly uh, magnetic slightly magnetized okay how do you find out let us say you take a, a can okay a food can and uh, at home and you take your compass needle very near to that and you can see its small deflection that clearly tells us that uh, the uh, the can food can has become magnetized because of the earth's magnetic field and if you actually go near a refrigerator which is made up of iron or a file cabinet whatever is made up of uh, an iron uh, will actually uh, become slightly magnetized because of the earth's magnetic field and you can actually even test it okay what you do is you take the compass needle very near and you can see that the food can has become a magnet it deflects a little bit and now you turn around the food can like this upside down and keep it uh, for a few more days and then go and look at uh, near the can and see whether the deflection is in the different direction because now if you turn it around the magnetization should happen in the opposite direction if that is the case then you can actually conclude that earth's magnetic field is influencing the iron anywhere any piece of metal that we have around uh, becomes uh, it has become a magnet okay and not just that okay if you see uh, many of the biological uh, you know in, in biology also a magnet uh, plays a very good role okay so the pigeon that you see okay the pigeon actually Uh, has inside its head some magnetized uh, material okay and pigeon can sense the direction of the magnetic field uh, like how we have multiple senses pigeon has uh, one more sense which is called as a magnetic sense the pigeon has a magnetic sense so uh, some of the animals we don't have you know, some animals have uh, this sense called magnetic sense Okay, pigeon is one such thing. Some bacteria also have magnetic sense. So, what are the industrial applications of uh, magnets, magnetism? Okay. So, what you can see here is an MRI scanner, uh, and uh, where uh, you can actually see inside our body, I mean, even the head, everywhere. Uh, uh, through ma using magnetism, we can actually scan inside. Okay. so how the magnetism is used there is a very complex thing that we will understand by the time we probably finish our magnetism okay. and another very interesting thing in the industry we can see is the so called magnetic levitation trains okay there are trains which are you know in in japan they are called bullet trains you know these trains actually uh, the real trains when they go very very fast like 300 400 km per hour and uh, they travel on a magnetic uh, line where there is a levitation okay you know unlike in a like poles repel you can create that and make it stand with a small you know, a few in a few centimeters away from the uh, ground so that there will be no friction and hence it can travel very fast so these are called maglev trains these are some of the applications of uh, magnetism so what have we covered today we just try to understand what are magnets uh, and then we have uh, uh, still need to go uh, four more videos to uh, get a hang of uh, concept concepts around magnetism so before uh, uh, moving forward uh, let's just uh, put some questions and see whether we can actually answer them okay so the first question that i have uh, is in what direction would a compass needle point if it were to rotate in all directions when taken to the earth's north pole if you go to arctic you know earth's north pole and 
keep a compass needle and allow it to rotate whenever wherever it wants to and how does it show, what direction does it show so think and answer this i'm not going to answer so you have to think and answer and second question is how do you make a compass needle if you are given a small magnetized needle and a rubber cork i'll give you a small magnetized needle and a rubber cork so where will you put that so that it can easily rotate it is not so much a magnetism question it is a common sense question think about it so if you keep here it should rotate and show the north you are given one small needle and one cork and nothing else so what if we humans had another sense uh sense organ like we have five no one more sense organ that could sense the magnetic field the power of the magnetic field and the direction if we had what could have happened think about that it's just an exploration there is nothing like a right answer or a wrong answer we explore it that's that's how you learn science okay so all the best so let's come back uh with the second video Okay, thank you.